Jack O'Brien, your host on this video visit to the French Quarter of New Orleans, Louisiana, one of the most exciting cities in the world. And we're going to be seeing the highlights today, all the way from the St. Louis Cathedral to the buggy rides around the French Quarter on this video visit to the French Quarter in New Orleans, Louisiana. This is the statue of Andrew Jackson, hero of the Battle of New Orleans and the man after which this square was named. Jackson Square is the hub of the French Quarter and there's always something happening here. For example, may I proudly present the fabulous Fumble Brothers, jugglers extraordinaire. Whoops. I'll get discouraged. Let me get the intro again here. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Fumble Brothers. All right, guys. So, <laughs> Last time, gang. Ladies and gentlemen, the extraordinary talents of the Fumble Brothers. All right, they're doing it. They're doing it. Uh-oh. Well, at least now we know how they got their names. How about having a portrait done? There are a number of artists around the square, and some of them are very, very good. In my opinion, Mary Jo is one of the best. Right across the street from Jackson Square is the Café du Monde famous for French coffee and beignets. A beignet is a tasty little donut covered with white sugar, guaranteed to turn your face in the front of whatever you're wearing white. There's no way you can escape. It also gets all over your hands. And the wrought iron furniture lets it cover the ground like snow. A beignet starts as a little square of dough, cut by a machine, and then is picked up and unceremoniously dumped into a deep, fat fryer, where it floats and bloats. The more he stirs, the bigger the beignets get. You guessed it, they're full of air, but they are good. When they get golden brown, they're dumped into the box where the waiting waiters can't wait to snap them up, sugar them with the semi-automatic sugarer, and whisk them off to the waiting patrons out front. and beignets, a New Orleans tradition, available 24 hours a day at the Café du Monde. Just behind the Café du Monde is the Moonwalk, not named after the moon, but after New Orleans Mayor Moon Landro, in whose administration it was constructed. Speaking of construction, there's an old-looking building across the Mississippi, and it's really kind of new. It's the Algiers Landing Restaurant, built a couple of years ago and designed and made to look old. As a quick change of pace, here's one of our prettier visitors afflicted with the dreaded itchy, itchy nose as a result of drinking our water, which incidentally comes from the Mississippi River, and that should tell you something. Another pretty girl sits in the same spot all the time, and people take her picture. And sometimes, just sometimes, they, they, they sit down on her. I don't know why, but they do. And sometimes we catch them doing it, and they're embarrassed. So they run away. Her father, who's down the way a piece, doesn't have that problem. But he is on his feet all day. All night, too. Here's a portion of the New Orleans skyline and the Greater New Orleans Bridge. While we're enjoying the view, Vic Tooker will serenade us on the Calliope aboard the steamboat Natchez.
The Natchez is run by a true steam engine, somewhat along the same lines as this one that sits on the dock, only much, much bigger. Meanwhile, back at Jackson Square, this is Ruthie, the duck lady. She used to have five or six ducks following her around, but due to accidents, she's down to one now. That fur coat is Ruthie's trademark. Wears it most all year long. The ducks don't seem to mind. Either does Ruthie. She's one of the resident bag ladies, and people in the quarter kind of look after her to make sure she's okay. She's a bit strange, but she brings a smile to my face every time I see her. She's one of the French Quarter people, and I like her a lot. I like watching young lovers, too, and there are a lot of them in the French Quarter. Whoops! Remember that little girl and her father? Well, here's her cat, and I think he likes birds. This is the Jackson Brewery. It used to be the home of Jack's Beer. Now it's a shopping mall. Let's take a quick peek inside and see what's going on. There are two buildings, each with five floors, and just about any kind of shop imaginable is located here. There's a cooking school showing you how to cook like a Cajun. Upstairs in the mill house, there's a magic man to show you how to amaze and mystify your friends. Got all kinds of things up there. There's the amazing ring trick. How does he do that? <laughs> Must use mirrors. How about a gift for yourself? Maybe this boat lamp combination is for you. Or maybe a three-masted schooner for your dining room centerpiece. Or how about this beauty? Handmade, chase your blues away. Or maybe you'd like some fudge. I like fudge. You like fudge? Hey, everybody, join us in the fudge board. Everyone say, ooh, ooh, Say, ah, ah, say, yummy. Yummy. And the very question of the hour, oh, of the hour is, can I lick the bowl? Can I lick the bowl? Come on. the roof of the Jackson Brewery with the roofs of the French Quarter spread out before us. As you can see, there's no wasted space in the quarter. This is one of the busiest ports in the country. Just about all the grain we export leaves from New Orleans to go to the rest of the world. This fully loaded vessel is heading for the Gulf of Mexico, 110 miles downstream. more pleasant ways to spend a half hour or so is to take a buggy ride around the French Quarter. This is the Napoleon building right here, established in 1797 for the benefit of Napoleon as a refuge, so to speak. He was in exile, but the poor fellow died before he could get back. So they brought slaves through the building and they lived up there. Then they bring them across the street to Pierre Vespero's slave exchange. And that's also where the defenses of New Orleans took place. To your right, right here is the La Pharmacie Francaise. 
the oldest licensed pharmacy in the United States, and uh, right now it's still intact. They are taking tours, and uh, you see Oliver in there, just tell them what? Y'all do not sound like the Tabernacle Choir, won't you? No way. <laughs> Now, hello there. This is Toulouse Street that we're fixing to cross here. Now, this street is named Toulouse after the one of the illegitimate sons of King Louis XIV. And uh, Ralph and Kaku's restaurant is right down the block there. And they feature seafood, fish, or fowl of any kind. Down Decatur Street is the farmer's market, and it's coming back. I have no idea where it's been, but it's nice that it's back. The, the fruit and vegetables are very fresh. There's always a lot of them, and it's kind of fun to shop where the big restaurants buy their produce. There's an ongoing seven-day-a-week flea market here also, where you can buy jewelry and tourist items and J-U-N-Q-U-E. The flea market really comes to life on weekends. The French Quarter at night has an entirely different feeling than during the day. Remember General Jackson? Well, here he is in front of the cathedral at night. But Jackson Square is not where the action is at night. Bourbon Street is where it's at. That's where the people are. Seems like there's always a crowd on Bourbon Street. an occasional nude lady just lazing around and of course a multitude of uh, dancers believe it or not, is not as hard to believe as some of the stuff that goes on outside on Bourbon Street. Yes, you can feel the excitement. And you can go dancing. Or you could dine at a quaint little restaurant. Whatever turns you on is on Bourbon Street. There's always a crowd at Pat O'Brien's. Has been ever since it opened. I think it's the same crowd. Still trying to get out. Has to be the number one bar in the country. They serve more liquor here by mistake than most places serve on purpose. Indians love a party, and everyone here has a wonderful time, no matter what the occasion. And where else in the world are you going to hear when the saints come marching in played on the bagpikes? Why, in the French Quarter, on St. Patrick's Day, of course.
Irish flag up the flagpole. And now the serious celebrating begins at all the Irish bars in the quarter. Another wonderful time is had by all at another party called the French Quarter Festival. The featured attraction this year was the Miller Skydiving Team, and they were something. The object, of course, is for the skydivers to land as close to the yellow flag as possible. is right on the button. Another wonderful time is had at Mardi Gras, Louisiana's number one reason to have a party. The second reason is sunset. The Mardi Gras dragons came all the way from California, and they are featured on our full-length video visit to the Mardi Gras in the French Quarter, which is also available in stores throughout the quarter, or from us, by mail. Mardi Gras is an excuse for people like this guy to dress up any way they please. Some guys want to be girls, and on Mardi Gras they are. As you will see, most people mask, and the fun starts early and lasts late. Mardi Gras is the last fling, so to speak, before Lent starts on Ash Wednesday, the next day. of these costumes first appeared at the Mardi Gras balls held weeks in advance of the actual day, which is Fat Tuesday. They also appeared on the floats of many parades held prior to Mardi Gras Day. Throw me something, mister. A lot of beads collected at parades are thrown from balconies in the quarter on Mardi Gras Day. Oh, here's a guy who looks like he's enjoying himself. French Quarter is an exciting place. Where else can you walk around the corner and find a Dixieland band playing and a pretty lady dancing with an ornate umbrella? <laughs> and that's our video visit to the French Quarter. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we look forward to seeing you again on other video visits. Our full line of video visit videotapes is listed at the very end of this tape. For now, this is your host, Jack O'Brien, saying thanks for this time. Till next time, bye-bye.